Our call to worship is a traditional Hindu and Buddhist story called Indra's Magnificent Jeweled Net. This version comes from Building Bridges, a Unitarian Universalist curriculum for middle schoolers studying world religions. Far, far away, in the abode of the great god Indra, king of heaven, hangs a wondrous, vast net, much like a spider's web in intricacy and loveliness. It stretches out indefinitely in all directions. At each node or crossing point of the net hangs a single glittering jewel. Since the net itself is infinite in dimension, the jewels are infinite in number. The sparkling jewels hang there, suspended in and supported by the net, glittering like stars, dazzling to behold. Close your eyes if you wish and imagine Imagine what this magnificent jeweled net looks like spread across the vast expanse of space. Now move in close to one jewel in the net. Look closely and you will see that the polished surface of the gem reflects all the other jewels in the net, infinite in number, just as two mirrors placed opposite each other reflect an image forever. Each jewel reflected in this gem you are gazing into also reflects all the other jewels. So the process of reflection is itself infinite. Now open your eyes and know that you are a sparkling jewel in Indra's net, as is every person around you. Every jewel is connected with all the other jewels in the net. Every person is intimately connected with all the other persons in the universe. Each has an independent place within the net and we all reflect and influence each other. A change in one jewel or person produces a change, however slight, in every other. Realize, too, that the infinite reflections speak to the illusory nature of appearances. Appearances are not, in fact, reality, but only a reflection. The true nature of a thing is not to be captured in its appearance. However powerful that appearance might be, it is yet only a reflection of what is real. In addition, whatever you do to one jewel affects the entire net as well as yourself. You cannot damage one strand of a spider web without injuring the entire web, and you cannot damage one strand of the web that is the universe without injuring all others in it, whether that injury is known or unknown to them. This can work for good or ill because, of course, just as destructive acts affect the entire net, so do loving, constructive, compassionate acts affect the entire net. A single helpful act, even a simple act of kindness, will send positive ripples across the infinite net, touching every jewel every person in existence. Please join us in a moment of silent contemplation as we prepare for our time together.
Good morning. I am Sarah Sanders, and I use the pronouns she, her, and I am your service leader today. I love art. You might have seen me embroidering during services or doodling in the margins of my papers. So when I saw this topic pop up on our calendar, I literally leapt at the chance to be a part of this service. Welcome to our interactive, multi-generational art as a spiritual practice service. We will make the case to you today that art is for everyone and that art is good for all of us. Whether you're with us in person or online, you ha will have a chance to actually engage in the process of making art today. I see many of us are already starting. <laughs> Please keep going. For today's journey, it is the process of making art that's important, more than the end product itself. So let's step outside of our comfort zones just a little and see what the creative process does to us. This transforming creative process is right in line with our vision of creating a community where we seek wonder together. Let's light our chalice together by speaking the words of this vision printed in the bulletin and on the screen. I think our helper has gotten wrapped up in the art. Come on. <laughs> I, I also wasn't where I was supposed to be, so that's my bad. Art does that to us. Art does that. It, it gets us exactly where we're supposed to be. Exactly. We work together as a church to transform ourselves, our community, and our world by sharing love, pursuing justice, and seeking wonder. Process art is the idea that the journey of creation is more important than the final product we create. It's all about experimentation and play. This kind of low stakes creative engagement gets us into our right brain where we are in the present moment and in touch with our emotions. It's something humans have been doing ever since they discovered iron oxide and charcoal could mark up the insides of cave walls. One of Reverend Tiffany's favorite forms of process art is the dirty cup pour, where acrylic paint is mixed with a pouring medium, water and silicone oil, to create strange organic shapes when the oil tries to escape from the watery paint. Tiffany and Karis filmed several of these processes and put it to music. This special music is an invitation to just enjoy the process. No countries 
for the good, finding the good, celebrating the good, we gather to share our joys and sorrows with each other. If you'd like to share a joy or a sorrow in person, please use these candle cards that are located on the back table. And if you'd like to share a joy or a concern from a distance, please email minister at hvuuc.org. is an artist. Yes, everyone. Sometimes it's harder to see in adults. Apparently not this group of adults, but <laughs> with mo Brian this morning said, you can never predict a UU. And he's very right. It's, I, I would have set more tables up if I had known. Um, but generally with adults, um, it's harder to see. Uh, when we hang out with little kids, we get to see this 
place where they haven't been taught to be self-conscious yet and they make it really obvious to us that creativity is just part of being human but I think a lot of y'all have figured that out here already Art is generally defined as a creative endeavor that expresses something about the human experience, especially emotion. There are things we need to express about ourselves that a rational string of words just cannot do. And yes, I do see the irony in my string of words that are saying this, which is why I will be brief today. <laughs> While our needs and our preferences in this area will vary from person to person, our impulse to create and express just needs to be fed sometimes. And I see the artistic impulse all around me, whether we are finger painting with our grandchildren, arranging a beautiful meal, playing music, gardening, writing, daydreaming, making a TikTok, waxing our car, rearranging our closets, we engage in our creativity so many ways and make our life more beautiful because of it. We live in a world that favors our logical left brain, but spending all our time in that headspace is just exhausting. There's too much past and too much future and not enough present in that analytical headspace. Our right brain, on the other hand, invites us to the present, to engage with our five senses and maybe even our sixth sense, intuition. The realm of feelings and connection, which is why art, all of the different and varied kinds of art, are spiritual practices. There are so many ways that engaging our creative right brain is beneficial. For example, it is often when we let go of the analyzing that answers to long-standing problems will just come to us out of nowhere. Even my very logical engineering friend will talk about how answers to his engineering problems have come to him in dreams before. Trauma specialists have been using process art to help people work through their stuck emotions in past horrors. Christy Gunter Sims, in her book Survivor Care, explores in depth how doing art helps people regulate their emotions and let go of some of the overthinking and ruminating that can get in their way, which helps the healing process so much. And art also brings joy to others. This morning, I was given this. And it might be, I probably held it upside down. There you go. And it brought me a lot of enjoy, a lot of joy and encouragement today to receive that from one of our young members here. But there are obstacles to these practices as well. We are plagued by the self-consciousness that comes from a capitalistic view of art that says our creative endeavors are only worthy if someone is willing to pay money for them. And I know that I have fallen victim to that line of thinking myself. But we Unitarian Universalists know that each of us here are worthy and loved. And wouldn't that mean that that our attempts at self-expression, our journeys toward healing, our little creative moments, our little gifts of joy that we can give each other are also we're very, very worth loving. These little arts are reflections of our souls, whatever soul means, which means that they are also invitations to observe the underlying interconnectedness of it all. Think back 
to that Indra's net story that was in our call to worship. We reflect each other and our artistic endeavors reflect ourselves and each other as well. Our hopes, our fears, our emotional world. Being human is powerful and challenging and it asks us to grow and expand our perspective all the time and art can help with that. When we look at art this way as engaging in a creative process that connects us to our inner worlds, art becomes a meditation, putting beads on a string, the back and forth of a paintbrush, the repeating lines of a zentangle, surrendering your body to a dance, fiddling on the guitar, squishing clay between your fingers, waiting for the light to crest over the mountains with your camera poised and ready. If these things are not spiritual practices, then I don't know what is. As usual, when our topic is about practice, it makes so much more sense for us to actually practice it. So we're going to make some art. I'm glad a lot of you have gotten a head start. For the folks here in person with us, you're going to have a few options to work with, but I want to say something to the folks at home first because you all can create community art with us too. I am going to be collecting art and especially photos on the theme of friendship. I want to invite you at home to pause this video and think about how you might represent friendship in a photo. It can be obviously concrete. It can be very abstract. Art is awesome that way. With, every, with almost everyone having a camera phone, uh, I'm hoping that this art form is accessible to as many of us as possible. And then your art can become part of the collaborative process by emailing the photos or other art that you make on the theme of friendship to photos at hvuc.org.
Um, this has been an amazing experience. We are going to do a few closing things. So um, you may find a seat wherever you're comfortable and it doesn't have to be the seat that you started in. Um, so we have a basket right here where you can put your extra circles at any point and we will be finishing this project later um, and Pro, we'll, it'll be on our Facebook page. It'll probably be displayed here for a while. And uh, if you want to buy it at the auction, you would be welcome to. Um, I, I have to say that uh, your participation today has been greater than I imagined. And I'm really struck by the beauty of what we're creating. I'd say it's only about half done. And and that's pretty extraordinary. And I can see the reflections of us and the reflections of the experience of being human in here. Um, courage takes an open heart. Uh, there's stuff about growth in here. There's stuff about band-aids and healing in here. I'm so grateful that you've put yourself into this project. Thank you so much. Do we want to move the thing so it's not? Well. <laughs> we can move it to the side. I was like, wait a minute. Is that good? Yes. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed embracing the process and being in the present moment. We invite you to shift your attention back to the chalice flame for our chalice extinguishing. I vote we let the artists win. The ones covered in paint from their last attempt to smuggle across the beauty of a bowl of fruit, the 14-year-old rapper learning to spit, throwing life's chaos on the rhythm wheel, uncovering the shapes that live on after the next break. I say we let the food bank volunteers win, the ones always carrying around their agenda for the meeting, waging campaigns to stock shelves with bread. I would like to see the nurses extend their string of victories from the hospital bed to the nation's boardrooms until we care for each other as if death were inevitable and mercy was the only thing that made the rounds bearable. I say we let the kindergarten teachers win as they raise up small edifices for the beauty words will never capture or reveal. I will let the grandmothers win when they tell the old stories that hold me in their keeping and the children yelling, play, play. The ones who have already cost us so much of our final productivity, the only tyrants who can command the true attention of the wise, I want them to win too again and again without pity. And then when the men with guns come, we can say, I'm sorry, but whether you win or lose, it's really never been my game, sir. I have lost and lost again a thousand wars of the heart. And those to whom I have waved the right flag, those to whom I have surrendered the whole and holy of my life will never, never let me go.